Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we'll be covering some PvP gameplay specifically on the Magic of Sorcerers. It's 1v2 I got the other day. What we're going to be doing, I'm going to do a video series in which I take every single class and kind of break down my movements, my spell usage, all my combos, my positioning, and what I'm thinking of as I'm doing it in hopes of making you a little bit better at PvP in Lost Ark. Before we dive on in, today's video is sponsored by AoeAH.com. These guys have some of the lowest prices for in-game currency and items of practically any game you can imagine. Link is down in the description below. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm just going to let this clip play out a little bit in the background. So this is using my Sorcerer's Meta build. If you guys have not seen that build video yet, I will leave a link to it. And there's also a card in the top right hand corner to kind of show you what the build is about and how to play it and yada yada what the skills do combos etc so i highly suggest you watching that before you delve on into this video or if you have a firm understanding on the sorcerer so if you just want to get a little bit better well, okay you're in the right place swear i won't forget this why do i regret this in my mind reckless thoughts are feeling endless sitting up i'm breathless anxiety's infectious i feel so defenseless betrayed and embarrassed i hate being open i hate being broken i feel like an ocean filled up with emotion anger in a potion rub it on like lotion i can feel it soaking the open the scars have awoken i can't move on till i let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath out Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath out Cause I can't move on till I let go So to start off, uh, this is going to be a 1v2 against a war dancer and also a sorceress later. Um, right now, uh, my health is super low. I really don't have a team. My team's pretty much, you know, practically dead. So I'm just trying to create distance from this war dancer. I know the war dancer has, I think, access to three gap closing abilities and a couple super armors. So it's important to keep all this in mind. Your positioning on the sorceress is everything, literally everything. If you get caught, you get caught. You have no super armors to save yourself. The only thing you have is your a uh, knock up and Im immunity your, your 12 second knock up you know whatever and that's pretty much it on top of your dodge roll and also your um your your identity abilities but you have to do damage in order to get uh, your bar charge up down here right so right now it's all about the kite game um, i know he's already committed one gap close i knew the second one was going to come i mean that that's pretty much what any ape is going to do they're just going to ape you down yada yada so I cast my fire ring preemptively to hopefully catch him in a CC, which I luckily do. So most of my skills are on cooldown right now, so I'm just trying to make space. It's important to try to move uh, unpredictably as well. I've noticed I did like a little circle animation here. I thought it was gonna be a little bit quicker, uh, but that's not the case. I, I whiff my pyre, which is not a big deal. I'm able to do just enough damage to teleport out. So right here, he can either commit on me one more time because he does have one more gap close, but luckily he doesn't. Um, that's why I cast the ice storm uh, if, i don't know the names of all these guys i've played this for hundreds of hours i still do not know the names to all these abilities because i've referenced korea guides i've referenced uh, us guides and the names are different translations so the ice walls what we're going to call it right everything's going to be very generic in this video so this is just create space again my sorceress is getting gone on pretty hard um so right here the sorceress uses a hard CC. Me being the good teammate that I am, I tried to peel her with a firewall. And luckily I did. So this is where good karma comes into play. The war dancer is just off screen here. I actually, because of this banner, I barely saw him. So I positioned myself to where when I cast the firewall, I can hopefully peel my teammate here. And luckily he jumps right into the firewall. This is why I like this morph so much better or this tripod than the other one because it's slow moving and you can use it as kind of like a barrier to move through. So I do get a little lucky there. I teleport out. Um, <laughs> this poor paladin misses the CC pretty hard, but it's okay. I'm trying to apply some pressure right here. I screw up and the cast animation for Ice Vortex is very lengthy. And if you try to use your identity skill to teleport out, you have to finish the animation. In hindsight, I should have probably uh, rolled here, but I did not. So I got caught with the CC. 
And luckily, he messes up the combo right here. Um, had he got this hard CC off, I would have been dead. So I'm just trying to create space right now. He does have one more gap close to my knowledge. I'm trying to keep track of all of this. It's very important for you to know your class matchups as well, okay? So I know that my CC immunity is down. If I get caught, I get caught, I'm dead. So right now, I'm just playing the kite game. I luckily do a Hail Mary Pyre to get this knockup CC to try to create space to give me a little bit more breathing room. Right here, I completely missed my heart CC because he committed his dodge roll. Right here, th again, back to this walled wild like this slow moving morph. You can use it as a barrier. So we'll kind of go back a little bit. If you stand behind this or stand in this, you anyone who's going to try to engage on you is going to get knocked up unless they commit to a tier one super armor. So right here, this is me still learning the game as well. I did not know on the tail end of this. You can just walk through this. You're not going to get knocked up. That's why I committed the lightning vortex here. Again, I get stuck in this god awful cast animation. And um, that may have actually saved me. He predicted that I was going to keep moving. I did not. So in hindsight, maybe this really did save me casting this ability here. So I'm able to use my dodge roll because I do not have a tel teleport. I had nothing left. If I get caught in the CC, I'm dead. So. I committed the dodge roll. Now this is on an eight second cooldown. So now I just have to get the hell out of here. Commits this tornado. So the tornado, again, this is where knowing your classes comes into play. I know last three seconds. So I really had no stuns to work with. I have my ring of fire I can play around with. But what I opt to do is cast Esoteric Reaction. Now this has a one second pass slash um, blow up time on it. So I time it out to where as soon as the War Dancer comes out of his tornado, if he tries to engage on me, he's going to get knocked up by the esoteric reaction. That's why I placed it on me defensively instead of near him. So right here, he comes out of his tornado. If he decides to go, if he decides to go on me, he's going to get knocked up by esoteric reaction. I think he realizes that too. He stays perfectly out of the range. It's a really good play on his part. Now this is where things get a little sus. The sorceress is coming in. I am literally inside their base. And my whole team is on the other side of the map. This is a terrible position on my part. And yeah, we got to make do with where we're at. All right. So I cast Ring of Fire. This is literally the only other CC I have left at my disposal. So this is more of a panic more than anything. And luckily casting this ahead of time, I'm able to get this knock up on the War Dancer. I'm, I'm hard CC'd right here because the Sorcerer's cast Lightning Vortex and got a lucky proc on the, the, the Paralyzed. So now I'm pretty much a sitting duck. Luckily, the sorceress gets super greedy and does not cast her lightning. She doesn't cast the, the frost ring. She I don't, maybe is on cooldown. I don't know. She tries to get greedy and goes in for ring of fire. And then this was the mistake right here. I did a short range teleport here. I did not do a long range teleport. Keep that in mind. Why did I do such a thing? You may ask. I need to apply pressure to the sorceress. I know that if anyone's going to catch me, she's going to catch me. I can kite the 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 war dancer no problem. The sorceress is what I'm worried about, so I decide to go offensive on her. So I go for the hard CC. I miss the war dancer over here. So right here, I know he's going to go in on me. I mean, why else would he be here? So I have my teleport up. I try to get as much damage on her as possible because I know she's hard CC. She's stun locked. I'm not sure of her dodge roll. Right now, her, her trinket, I guess your World of Warcraft players would call it. So I'm going to preemptively teleport away from the War Dancer. And look that I did because he does go in for his CC. Right now, I'm pretty sure he has no more gap closers. So I'm just trying to get as much damage on the Sorceress as I can. He walks into this. And this is where I pop my... I, I knew I was in the range of popping my Awakening ability. And this is a, the best time to use it. When you get a two-man identity, uh, or a two-man Awakening, this is really good. So we'll kind of speed this up a little bit. Again, watch my bar fill up. This is going to give me three more teleports I can use to my advantage. I felt that at this moment, if anything catches me, I'm dead. I need to teleport all over the place. So that's why, again, to do damage, you see knock up, but also regenerates your bar down here. So right here, I kind of make a blunder. I should not have cast my firewall because you see the scales right here this means they are knock up immune for like the next second or so so this was a misplay on my part but it kind of worked out to my advantage i tried to aim the wall in the, such a way that it will hit the war dancer and also the sorcerer so they have to move and relocate right here you guys may have missed it i'm using what i learned earlier from their previous war dancer engagement that you can blink into this fire as long as you're on the tail end of it and not get knocked up 
So this is where your positioning is everything on a sorcerers. You have to, if you ever played Dota or League of Legends, like what defines a good sorcerers from a great sorcerers is the tiny micro movements that you do in a match. And I'm still working on it. I'm by no means a pro. I'm hoping like when rain comes out, I can really see where my skill is at. But right here, I blink through her firewall on the tail end of it. Now, I know she committed her dodge roll. So we're gonna go back here, right here. You see how she's glowing this orange shit right here? She commits her dodge roll. So now I know if I get a knock up on her, I can perma stun her. I, I can completely perma lock and burst her down. So that's what I do. I teleport in such a way to where I barely miss this firewall, but I can also get a two man knock up with my flame wall. It's important to know when to play aggressive on the sorcerers as well. I could see where I was at, maybe teleport back to my team, but I saw the sorcerers opportunity and I took it. So I position myself in the event that I can get a two man knock up, which I did. This knock up actually secures the kill on the war dancer, which is very nice. Now she's gonna fall down, you know, yada yada, you whatever. I go in for a hard CC just so I can land my lightning strike. So this is gonna put her down into executing. She commits her teleport. Now this is where your positioning really shows. You need to know your class abilities, especially your own class. Certain abilities have certain ranges on this. So what do I do next? Most people would teleport on her, you know, F, R, you know, whatever here on my bar and blow her up. What did I do? Why, why did I teleport right here? We're gonna play this really slowly. I know she used Squall from the very beginning of the quip. I know she uses Squall and not the Ice Wall that I used. So it has a little bit more range. The cast animation is quicker. But if you know the range, you can outplay it. So right here, I know for a fact I am out of the range of the squall. So she casts it, she misses it. I go for the longer range knockout, which is the pyre, eclipser, and this is what allows me to secure this kill without actually dying. So look at my health. Literally one HP in a dream. She takes out due to due to the dot damage. And yeah, more of the story, guys. Positioning is fucking everything. Okay, on the sorcerers, you have to be proactive, not reactive. And again, do not be afraid to take advantages like that. As soon as you see someone commit their dodge roll, you need to collapse. You need to make a play nine times out of ten. Now, this will be like Grandmaster gameplay, which I have been watching a lot of. Uh, those guys are much more conservative about their full committals. But in general, if you see someone use their dodge roll, that's the time to pressure them. So hopefully what i went over in this video was helpful i'm going to be doing a more series like this more pvp content um for you guys if you found this absolutely at all helpful guys i would really appreciate a like and sub from the bottom of my heart if you want to get better at pvp man subscribe to the channel we're going to be covering a lot of it and since we're kind of burnt out i'm burnt out personally on the grind to tier three so i will be doing that kind of casually and then the pvp mostly but uh, yeah, and before I go, guys, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat. I honestly could not be doing this without you. Thank you all for watching. This has been Horcrux. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.